Welcome to DAX Machina. Join us as we explore the mysteries of this world. Cryptids, monsters, macabre tales, and horror stories abound. Could they be true? Are monsters real? Sorry about that, folks. I hit play on the wrong video. Thank you all for joining us tonight on another edition of DAX Machina. Joining me in the studio tonight is Robbie Rip Rains. Doc won't be here tonight. He's not feeling well. And our special guest tonight is Cameron Buckner from Everybody Knows over at Dixie Cryptid and the Steve Lilly Journals. Cam, thanks for joining us, man. How are you doing? Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, doing good. Trying to get all this technical stuff worked out. Well, you know, it wouldn't be one of our shows if we didn't have a technical glitch or six. Or oh, I just hit something on this laptop. I don't know what's going on. I'm sorry about these lights behind me. I cannot get this screen to get off. No up. worries at all, man. KC Callaway, thank you for the uh, super chat. That is awesome. Thank you very much. Wow, that's that is nice. Heck yeah. So, Cam, how you been, man? It's been a hot minute since we've had you on the show. Yeah, I've been doing good. I haven't had time to really do much podcasts, and I think I've put out like four in the last two months. But uh, I've just loaded up with work, and it's it's wearing on me. And I've got probably another month or two of this, and and then it'll be over. And I think I think this slug of work has done me in. I was telling somebody the other day that. I'm about ready to hang it up and try podcasting and writing for a living. So we'll we'll see if I have the guts to do that when the time comes. Well, I, I certainly think you got the chops to do it. You know, whether or not you can pull the pull the bandaid off and go full time podcasting, but you you certainly got the writing chops and the narrating ability. I think you can definitely pull it off. I don't know if I do or not, but if I can just pay the bills, you know. That'll be good. It's kind of foolish to walk away from, a, you know, like a 40 year career in an industry, but, and I'm not tired of it. I'm just tired of the, I don't know. It's like when I need my customers to help me do them a good job. What that means is I need information, I, you know, we, the business I'm in, I'm, I always need information to give them what they need. And nobody seems to give a crap anymore. It's like, and then you have these people in these offices, and I think they're they're paid huge sums of money to say, when? When are you going to get this to me? When? They call me every day. When are you going to be done? When are you going to be done? I told one the other day, I said, if you call me and ask me that again, I'm going to roll these drawings up and send them back to you. Don't call me and ask me that damn question again. Well, that's what I, that they're asking me. And I'm like, I'm telling you, I don't know when I'm going to get it done. I don't have any information. I'm having to just kind of guess at everything. It takes forever to do that. Don't be talking to me. Talk to the guy who made the design drawings, you know. So get his ass in gear and ask him when he's going to get me some information. That's who you need to be asking when. There you go. Anyway, I'm just belly aching, but I hear you, man. It's fine. Oh, oh, drives me crazy, you know. People who are driven, you know, to to kind of sit and spin your wheels and knowing you've got this huge chunk of work, you could just be smoking. I mean, you could just be smoking it out if you just knew these little things. And what they want us to do is to guess at uh, so many different things. And then we submit it for approval and it comes back. Then they give us the answer. So we're guessing. And then sometimes we'll resubmit it and they'll change it again. So we just have to keep guessing and guessing and guessing until we get it right. They have the information. I don't know why they don't take time to go ahead and just put it, put it, uh, you know, on the package they send me. But it's this this industry has become more and more that way and i'm just getting tired of it you know it, it's good money i mean it's good money but i don't know what would i compare it to it's almost like um 
it's almost like you're you could be a you know a, a first team all american sec football player but they keep you on the bench you know warming up the whole game it's that's it's you never get to play and so it's uh and then all and then when they when you don't aren't able to perform like they expect it you don't meet those schedules then they get all pissed off and start chewing i don't have much ass left but uh i told a guy the other day who was chewing on my ass i said look brother i've been chewed i've had my ass chewed by pros you you're not you're not hurting me at all <clears throat> so anyway it's <laughs> i'm sorry to complain it's just and the whole time i'm sitting there you know, going through this very frustrating process of doing this stuff, I'm thinking, I could be recording audio books. I could be doing something I love on my schedule. If I if that's what I was doing for a living, I would do it nonstop, 10, 12 hours a day. Because I just don't, I don't like to pull up. I don't, I got to keep busy all the time. So, anyway. Yeah, that's something that people don't realize how much how many hours go into stuff like that. I mean, audio yeah. uh, doing the audio is a time-consuming, tedious process. You've got not, you've not you've, you've got not only the the hours spent recording it, but then you've got to go back and edit it. It's got to make certain sound sound level requirements, you know, and and to get it up on on like Audible, uh, then it's got to pass Amazon's exam, you know. So it, there's a lot more to it than people realize. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, if you're if you can do it for six, eight, ten, twelve hours a day, you can get a lot done. And, uh, True. It's like the other day, you know, I'm halfway done with Blood Eagle. The other day, I just took a day off from work and just recorded, and I recorded like four chapters in one day, and edited two. So I mean, I can make good progress if I just have the time. And the good thing about it is that I have the information right there in front of me so I don't have to wait on anybody but anyway y'all didn't want to talk about that so speaking of waiting on did I did I send you those audio those uh files the the for dark frontier yes yes okay yeah. I want to make sure I was like wait a minute did I forget to send those oh man you sent them within like five minutes I've got other here on my big hard nice. drive so yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm excited for that. I'm. I'm really glad you like the Dark Frontiers books. Oh yeah, yeah. I want to talk about it, but I don't want to do any spoilers for anybody. But there's different parts in them. I'm like, I'm just gritting my teeth reading it, going, "Hell yeah, get, go get them, get them." It's <laughs> <laughs> not a and Doc. You ever get that way, Robbie, when you read his stuff? Oh yeah. All the time. Me and I can text each other all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I'm awesome. Oh yeah. I uh I enjoy writing them. I really do. And they're, they're a lot of fun to write. But uh, you know, it I whenever you put one of them out on audio, I, I always listen to it, you know, at least once because it's it, with you narrating it, it's like, and my wife's like, why are you listening to that again? I'm like, I don't I enjoy listening to it. She goes, you wrote the damn thing. Why are you listening to it again? Because I'm having fun. It, it is a different experience to hear something you've written. I mean, even my Steve Lilly stuff, I don't, when I do a podcast, I have to re-listen to it to get all the mistakes out and edit it. But after I'm done with it, I don't, I, I have maybe three or four times like in the car my wife will go pull up your latest podcast uh, it's funny because sometimes I forget it's me reading it and I get into the story you know it kind of sucks me in and um, but yeah listening to Steve Lilly stuff stuff that I wrote uh, I get real critical you know when I'm listening to it and then in a lot of days the next day I'll go back and change stuff uh, for the printed version that should be coming soon, and anyway, it's uh, yeah, it's great to listen to your to your stories. So, uh, what's uh, what's coming up in the near future for uh, for uh, Steve Lilly? Well, uh, you know, we're up to 
we released 15 and it's been two or three months since I've been able to pick up a pencil and, but I have a notebook right over here full of notes for the next five episodes. And I'm going to take, uh, I don't think this is a spoiler, but I'm going to take Steve down a dark road. I think I talked to you about it, DA. Yeah, we, we talked um, about that a little bit. I'm going to take him down a dark road for four or five episodes and, uh, I'll write all those this fall and winter. And um, so I, I kind of feel like the stories are all kind of starting to run together. And um, Roxanne, they did in the very last episode, him and Angela hooked up. And well, not they didn't hook up. There's a there's an enchanted romance beginning. And anyway, um, and it's pretty obvious in episode 15. But I'm going to take him down a dark road and he's going to have some trouble because I feel like, you know, the whole series is almost comedic. It's, it's almost it's as much comedy as it is anything. And uh, I'm feeling like taking a, taking a little serious tone for a while and then maybe get back to the more lighthearted stuff. And But I don't plan to stop writing it. I just, it's just people i get emails every single day comments in my podcast comment section and uh I, my wife and i were we were going somewhere the other day and we were at a stoplight and my little bell on my phone went off and i looked up and i said oh, somebody else emailing me want me want to know when steve lily's coming out i'm like if i get another one of those i'm gonna scream it's it's not that I don't appreciate people doing it. It's just that I want to get to it so bad. And if if nobody says anything, it doesn't remind me that that's what I want to be doing. But um, And then she was talking to my daughter-in-law on the phone just tonight, right after we ate supper. And she was saying, yeah, he was saying the other day, he just wished everybody would shut up about Steve Lilly. And I told him it's that's a nice compliment. And I said, well, I know that's a nice compliment. I'm not stupid, you know, but it's just that it reminds me that that's what I want to be doing. And that's not what I'm doing. I'm doing I'm I'm sitting here working on stuff that I can't really move on, but I got to stay with it. And what I do in my job, if there's a section of a job that I can't do, I move to another section. So there's always something to do, and so I try to stay ahead of it. But um, so yeah, I, I'm gonna take him. I'm gonna take him down a more serious, dark, long road for about three to five episodes, and he's gonna. Some things from the past are gonna come back up. Things about his life you don't know, how he actually got found. See, nobody knows actually how he got recruited to do this or how this organization even knew who he was. I think people assume it's because of the, from the very first episode when he fed, he, he, he <laughs> counterfeited uh, squatch meat for uh, some pork, but it wasn't pork, it was a squatch piece of I mean, meat. I remember that they, they got sick. Mm -hmm. Everybody got sick, and uh, and they found him that way. But there's more to it, and so, um, and I probably should have gotten into that by now. But I just, you know, it's just I never planned on writing more than one or two of those. I kind of left it open to do a series if people liked it, uh, but I really didn't. I just didn't think anybody would really like it, but. So I'm so surprised people like that stuff because he's a popular character. Oh man, it's so fun to it's so fun to come up with that stuff. I, I can't remember which which part it was. It was one of the more recent ones. I was thrilled to death when when some of the guys from my Wild Hunt showed up. I was like, oh yeah, yeah. They've been yeah. Two, two episodes so far. So I love that I love that. Movie. Yeah, and they'll be back. Matter of fact, you and I talked about one scenario where mm -hmm. he's going to call him in, and it's going to be spectacular. It's going to be just spectacular. But, I've got a couple uh, more, couple more Steve Lilly short stories in the works myself. Hopefully, I have those done soon. Good. 
Good deal. Uh, by the way, someone, uh, there was a man who was making comments in one of my latest podcasts, and he was like, hey, how do you feel about me writing a, some Steve Lilly fan fiction and sending it to another podcast? And I said, that's fine with me. So if anyone listening, I I love fan fiction. DA, did you hear DA just say he appreciated me bringing the wild hunt into one of my stories? I like it when he uses Steve Lilly and his stories. People who write, you know, we own the character. I don't think there's any, I don't think there's any danger of, you know, losing, I don't know, the rights to the character or anything. Uh, so I love fan fiction. So anybody who ever wants to write some a story about Steve Lilly, all that I ask is that you pay attention to his personality and, um, you know, keep him, if it, if it matches the way those guys are, then I'll narrate it because I love them. And I'll put them on Dixie. The only stuff I put on the Steve Lilly journals is stuff I write. And other you know, other published authors might write. I think I've got one of yours on there. I think so, yeah. DA. I think it's uh, I think it's uh, Operation Lilly is the one that's on the Steve Lilly podcast. I think that's the one, yeah. Yeah, so, it is. Anyway, you know that story you wrote about uh, Gray Eagle and those guys in Afghanistan? Mm -hmm. that that video uh about every three months it gained it i don't know if it's the algorithm or what but um that video will pick up steam again and get five thousand views and over a three-month period because it's pretty i think it's a couple years old and uh, pick up uh, People who like the audio experience just absolutely love that type of that genre and that. And I don't think it has to be uh, cryptids, you know, or monsters, although monsters make it great. It's. Um, it's just uh, they're just fast paced and action packed, and they're usually long. Even the short stories are hour to two hours long and. Um, it's just great to be driving and or like I listen to stuff all day long while I'm working and I can rarely find anything really good. Sometimes I wish other people had narrated your stuff too. So I could listen to your stuff on audiobook. But um and then I don't know, I may hurt some people's well no, I won't say any authors, but uh it's like there's some books it's like I'll, I'll read a book, at, you know, uh, in the Tom Clancy techno thriller genre and, you, and, and then you put the book down and then you life gets busy. You don't get to read. You want to read somebody else or whatever. And then you come back around. Uh, and when you buy one of those, you get recommendations from other authors who are in that genre. And I don't know, some of them are just so. It's like the protagonist is so polished. Like I'll give you an example. This he'll never um, hear this. Who wrote the Scott Harvest series? Brad Thor. Yeah, Brad <clears throat> Thor. Okay, here's Scott Harvest. You know he's a CIA operative. He's a you know he's an American assassin, and he's always doing this. Um, you know, this was during the, the war on terror and all this stuff. And so here's Scott Harbeth. He's he's Ivy League educated. He's uh, off the Olympic ski team. He's a multimillionaire uh, day trader in securities and, you know, on the stock market. And he just kind of does this CIA assassin stuff kind of part time. It feels like, you know, or it's just too, you know, it's just so polished. And now Brad Thor's books are good. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I've read six or eight of them and they're really good. But, um, and I think uh, who wrote the Mitch Rapp series? He died, but um, I know who you're talking about, but I can't think of his name. 
Vince Flynn. That sounds right. Vince Flynn wrote the Mitch Rapp series. It's like the first four or five books he wrote. But even Mitch Rapp is like this uh, the superhuman kind of guy. Now Mark Greening has, oh man, he's right. He's writing all these books with this. Now his protagonist is pretty good. It's kind of it's 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 like way beyond believable that this guy could take this much punishment. But they're good books. You know, Mark is from Memphis too. My brother went to high school with him. <clears throat> and um you know he wrote for years and just finally got picked up by a publisher and just skyrocketed took off he wrote for tom clancy for a long time and uh so anyway i'm just rambling hey man i like talking books so i always wanted to have a character like steve if i thought if i ever wrote anything that's kind of a thriller or whatever i wanted a character who who's not he's not polished he's not rich he's not although you'll find out steve lilly is pretty really smart guy he's pretty well educated and all and uh but he just he knows who his people are and that's kind of who he runs with and um just an average guy you know i even had ideas years ago about <clears throat> some of these terrorist hunters just being average guys and most of the seals and the guys who do that kind of stuff are average guys but you know steve lilly he has no military training nothing he just has a pretty good working knowledge of guns and firearms and knives and but he's got that um i don't know maybe that southern cleverness that you know, some of these older guys down here have. So I think that's why he's so relatable, Cam. He he's not like you said, he's not a super soldier. He's not you know he's not one of these larger than life characters that like you said, just makes it through he's just he's an average everyday guy that's put in a situation and has to do deal with it the best way he can. Yeah. And I think that's why he's so relatable and so popular. I was it reminds talking, me of some of my cousins. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to, uh, um, you know, Hook is in a MC club and it's a Memphis chapter. And uh, I did a story a couple of weeks ago, uh, a guy from uh, an actual MC club wrote the story and he, he, tell, he told me that in his email. However, he's... He told me that he wasn't a one percent. He was he wasn't in a one percenter club like the Hell's Angels or Mongols. He was, but Hook is. Hook's in one of those uh, deals. But this guy knew a bunch of them, um, and I've talked to another. I, I I did have somebody reach out who was uh, once in the Hell's Angels, and <clears throat> he told me he said whatever you do with Hook don't don't na don't name their club after some existing club because you will catch some hell over it but i kind of don't think i would i kind of think if some people in the club heard it they'd like it but um anyway so hook is not a bad guy he's in the club he's a legacy because his father was in the club and and he uh, he just he doesn't do really bad things. And this uh, both of these guys were saying that makes Hook more likable. He's like in a mean, you know, a, a, a an organization known for its organized crime. But he's kind of a good guy with the bad boy patch and rocker, and it and it kind of makes him. Uh, more likable guy. So anyway, I learned these things about how to develop characters and the whole thing about Steve Lilly is I'm, I'm learning as I write it. So. Hey, I've got 30 books out and I'm still learning as I write. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's a, it's a constantly learning process. And I've said this many times and I will always say it. The only writer I'm trying to be better than is the one I was like yesterday. Yeah. 
I, I just write the stories I write, and some people like them, and some people don't. And uh, you know, the people that like them will, will enjoy reading them, and those who don't can read something else. I mean, it doesn't hurt my feelings. Yeah. No matter how well you write, no what kind of story you write, you can't write a story that everybody will love. It's just impossible. No. No, I had some guy. You know that Afghanistan podcast I was telling you about. Somebody made a comment the other day that. It's like we were disrespecting America's servicemen and all that stuff. And Whatever. Like, it's like, I don't know. Look at all the comments in there from servicemen that enjoyed the story. Yeah, I haven't been able to keep up. I've been running my mouth. I've read a lot of the comments on that, that the uh, Gray Eagle in Afghanistan story. And there's a lot of folks that are ex-military that really enjoyed the story. Yeah, there's, oh. a, there's a few few nitpicking things here and there, but you know what? I just ignore those. Uh, I, I don't take any of that stuff personally. you got to have a pretty thick skin if you're an author because somebody's always going to take a shot at something you write. Oh, yeah. Uh, but by and large, I've learned that the people that are the, the who take who are the biggest critics are people who would never try to write something themselves. You know what's funny is uh, my youngest son was – he did two – two deployments to Afghanistan and he was he was a combat marine and it's funny because um, it's like he and I can be together and he's got a Marine Corps emblem tattoo on his arm <clears throat> so other people see it and they'll say hey well, you know where what outfit were you in or whatever that, that talk they do and he'll say yeah uh, whoever's talking to him will say, yeah, I was in so-and-so, so-and-so. And my son will just kind of nod and go, yeah, okay, all right. And we'll get back in the truck like we might be at a gas station. We'll get back in the truck start running. I was like, you think that guy was really in combat? He goes, no, he wasn't. He was a pogue. <laughs> there's combat Marines and there's pogues. It's the people that do everything else. And so, um, and for those of you who don't know, PO, pogues or POGs are persons other than grunts. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, who was it just asked about that? Uh, Not that God. being a pogue is less important or dishonorable or anything like that. But when somebody was... Uh, in some kind of support capacity and they weren't firing their rifles or getting, you know, my son got, they got blown. He got blown up twice uh, with IEDs. They were in all kind of firefights. He was, they were in a third LAR out of uh, 29 Palms. And it's like a, it's a light uh, LARs light armored reconnaissance battalion. And those guys get in those LAVs, those six or eight wheel things with the big 20 millimeter Bushmasters up on them. Mm -hmm. So you have a driver, a gunner, and a commander, and then you have six or eight scouts in the back. And they go out for two or three months at a time, and they never come back to an FOB, ever. They call them the little piggies of the Marine Corps because they are so filthy when they get back. There's no, they're in the desert. There's no water. There's no place to shower. Their food is choppered in, you know, at diff different locations. And they, they just keep patrolling. And um, anyway, so the point is he, he knows what combat is. And he's like, you know, it's like weeks of living like an animal. And then there's four or five hours of fighting. It's like the fighting is, um, and he showed me some videos that they took, like they had GoPros and stuff. And I mean, you can hear bullets whizzing over their heads and all kind of stuff. And <clears throat> what they were doing is filming some of the uh, airstrikes coming in on this town on the Pakistani border. It's unbelievable the the sounds that those ordinances make and. Uh, it's just unreal. I mean, it's just unreal. But anyway, he knows from the way other people talk whether they've really done it or not. Because guys who have yeah. done it, you just they just know. And so, <clears throat> so if you haven't been 
in combat or you weren't an 0311 or 0, he, I think he was an 0314. Um, don't say you are if you weren't because anybody that was can sniff you out pretty quick. So I mean, it's not a big deal. It's, Marines are Marines. Look, just get through boot camp. And, and then they all have to go to infantry school. I think they used to call it ITR, but now it's, inf uh, I think it may be just infantry training. But uh, my son said that was harder than boot camp. <clears throat> and since he was going to be a grunt, it's like if, if you get in the Marine Corps and your MOS is um, like a helicopter mechanic or whatever, which is a very important job, or an ordnance guy or a, a artillery guy, you go through, I don't know the exact time dates, but let's say you go through, everybody goes through six weeks of infantry training. But the guys who are really infantry, the guys that carry the rifles and mortars and all the weapons i think they do like 12 weeks of it that's how he wound up in the lar <laughs> they they got they were about week eight in infantry training and he said that they all you know they they corralled us up out on the parade ground <clears throat> he was in pendleton at this time and he said we all got up on the bleachers in this uh Sergeant got out and he was recruiting guys to come to LAR or LAV school, LAR school, or to join the third light armor reconnaissance battalion. And um, he goes, most guys didn't want to do it, but he says, I raised my hand and he goes, is there, is there much hiking? He goes, there's pretty much no hiking. He goes, I'm in. That's how he, that's how he got in it. Cause he's short. He's like five foot, I'm five foot eleven, almost six feet. He's five foot seven, I think, five foot six, five foot seven. So he's got short legs. And in and inevitably you're gonna be on a hike with these really extremely fit, long legged, lean Marines who take <clears throat> one step for every three steps a short-legged guy takes. And he, he, they would just almost fall out. The shorter guys would just be way back in the back. They would almost fall. You know, they always are almost falling out because they're working twice as hard just to keep up with those guys. Thank God for those tall, long-legged, lean Marines. That's what we need. But there's little guys mixed in with them. It's, it's a lot more effort to keep up, and they have to keep up. They cannot fall back. So he said, is there any hiking? He said, there's hardly any hiking. He goes, sign me up, because he didn't want to do any more of that hiking. So anyway. Yeah, I don't blame him. Robbie's in training right now. You're at the uh, what used to be Fort McClellan, Alabama, right? Yep, that's where I'm at. What's the training the you're going through? Uh, I'm at the Center for Domestic Preparedness going through – Law enforcement emergency response complex uh, situations, which is a lot of government talk for. I've been in a level C uh, hazmat suit all week, learning how to handle and restrain suspects at some kind of, you know, a weapon of mass destruction is released or any kind of chemical spill or anything like that. So it's been a I think I've lost about 30 pounds this week, sweating it off. That's good. So, look, is it a little cooler on you this week? It feels like it here in Mississippi. Uh, we we did our outside training yesterday. Now, I was joking around with the doctor when we was doing our vitals because <clears throat> my blood pressure and my pulse rate was elevated. I said, well, uh, yeah, Doc, I said, I'm 20 years older than most of the people in this class, and I've been running around outside in a garbage bag in 90-degree weather. I think my blood pressure would be a little bit elevated. But I think it was about 92 yesterday, and then put that suit on, which makes it even worse. So, yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. Yeah, Northwoods, it's pretty much 
mop four. Yeah. We uh they, I, I I couldn't go hot. They actually put us in there with nerve bacon, but I, I, they couldn't get a good seal on my beard. So, but yeah, they went all the way up to level A and put us in there with VX. And, Are you there uh, now? No, nah, this is just a law enforcement training class. Are you there now? Are you like in a <laughs> yeah? Person? I'm here. Uh, we got uh, we finished up with the class class stuff today, and tomorrow we got trained the trainer. So once I'm done, I guess I'll be a uh, certified to train people how to do this stuff, which is scary. So yeah, this has been a fun week of running around with a bunch of people half my age, trying to act like I'm still that age, and I'm not. Y'all, excuse me, I'm trying to mute some things that are making some noise. If I can find the mute button. No worries. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we were talking, when you and I talked on the phone the other day, uh, we, we were discussing some of the future audio projects. And uh, I got to say, I'm pretty excited. I know you've been working on, on uh, uh Operation Blood Eagle for a while, but uh, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing you tackle uh, Dark Frontiers. I am too. I'm really yeah. excited. I've been kind of working on Declan's accent. I don't, does he have a full Irish accent or? He, he, he's, Declan is based, the way Declan talks is based on my grandfather. If the more alcohol or the matter he got, the more the accent came out. So the, the so at most times he'd be like, "Hey, how you doing, fella?" But uh, you start getting mad, and the accent gets a little thicker. Hey, it's like oh, the comment I made in the second book was, you know, even Abigail had noticed that the accent coming out isn't always a good thing. I don't know if I can do it. I got I got the German accents kind of sort of you know i kind of did a little german accent in blood eagle i tried a little spanish accent and um i think it's pretty good i'm looking forward to hearing it i really am there's there's so many characters so it's hard to give them all a unique voice and so I'm well, on, the, on the bright side cam jed and doc shouldn't give you any trouble at all yeah they're just hillbilly accents <laughs> Miss Naoma says, I've been staying quiet so far, but I have to hear you do an Irish accent. Ah, uh, Naoma, hush. I haven't, I haven't even got close to getting it right. <sighs> my, my people are straight from Ireland, so I, I don't know. I've never been around an Irish accent. I've always just been, uh, well, the only accent I've really spent a lot of time around uh, other than English accents of Spanish, <clears throat> but the German, the Germans in uh, Blood Eagle, I, for some reason I nailed that. I feel like I did. So. I can't wait to hear it. The, the thing is, is there's really not one Irish accent. There's about a dozen different Irish accents. A Belfast accent is completely different from, say, Southern or Dublin accent. Uh, you know, a Belfast accent has that uh, has more of a, a softer lilt at the end. Like, how you doing there, fella? Yeah, they, they, it's, it's always comes up a little bit at the end, almost like it's a question. Uh, but then the southern accents are, are, are different. You know, I mean, Galway's different. So there's really no one set Irish accent. But uh, but Declan's kind of got that soft lilt to his tone, uh, which tends to come out more when he's when when things are about to get ugly. Y'all remember uh, Kelly's Chili? That sounds really familiar. It's canned chili. Yeah. Kelly's chili, and they used mm -hmm. to have a song. Yeah, what's cooking at the Kelly's? Yeah, what's cooking at the Kelly's? Blah, 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 blah. And then it's good, good, good. It, I think it may have been a regional thing, but w there was a Kelly's plant in Jackson, Tennessee, when I lived there, and I used to drive by it all the time. I always wanted to go in there and see how they made that chili. But anyway, 
that's the only our that's as good of an Irish accent as I could get. You probably couldn't hear it, but they sang the song. Yeah, what's cooking at the Kellys? They sang I'll it. Be happy to, I'll accent. be happy to help you in any way I can, man. <laughs> Thad Brown says, when's Blood Eagle coming out? Oh, I don't know. I, You know, I've probably... I was working I, I was working on a book. I'm not going to say who or for, but <clears throat> I had four chapters left to go. And I told the author, I said, look, I'm just so busy. It's, I'm having a hard time finishing it, and uh, but I've only got four chapters to go. I put so much time in that book just at night, early in the mornings, and then um, they jerked the contract from me. So I had all the, I've, I've got all that work sitting there for nothing that I could have been spending on Blood Eagle, and um, so I'm, I'm within, if I can get back to it. Probably within a, at least a week at the most of having it done. So I'll say this. We talked about me jumping straight to Dark Frontiers and doing Blood Eagle another time. But I'm so close on Blood Eagle, I'm probably just going to finish it and then jump right into the first Dark Frontiers. Dyatlov Pass is a great book. It's a great story. I kind of don't want to skip it, you know. Well, you know, if uh, if you do find yourself with uh, a lot of free time on your hands, I can keep you busy. Well, maybe in October or November when I finish this work, I'll just spend three or four days a week just doing that and then three days a week doing the podcast. That's all I'll do. Well, I promise you, I will keep the books coming. Well, I know. I mean, you've got so many out now, I can never catch you. I'll never catch you. Well, you know, I don't know. Sometimes sometimes I get stuck on something for, for a few weeks, and you got a pretty good gap there. So what are you working on now? I'm uh, finishing up Demons Part 2. I've also got another short story that's uh, it's called it's it's called Wrath of the Dog Man, and it's it's set in New Mexico in the early '80s. I'm finishing that up, and then I'm going to finish my first fantasy novel, uh, which is about 40, 45,000 words in. I have to finish the second Nightmare Hunter book, and then it's after that will be the next uh, next uh, Lakeview Man book. So I got plenty to go. Yeah, <clears throat> you got a busy schedule. Kay Bowers says, what's the story with the Steve Lilly sightings? I don't know what that means. People been been uh, writing in saying they saw Steve Lilly. Oh, yeah, that's kind of goes along with the fan fiction that I was talking about earlier. Um, you know, I invited people to write those stories. And so when I get a good one, I... Uh, I mean, I do it. I've got a couple now that I need to do. Just can't get to them, but I will. Jeff, yeah, people run into Steve Lilly and they just, the story's usually not about Steve Lilly or his crew. It's about some, it, they're fiction. And it's about something this person went through, but Steve Lilly come, comes in and it's usually kind of funny. So I love doing those. <clears throat> Roxanne Delgado says, Cam, you should sing You Are So Beautiful like Steve Lilly did. Please. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I would just like to have seen the looks on the, the on the on the Bigfoot's face when he started busting out You Are So Beautiful. You know, they had to been like, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> well, you know, that's not original. That I got that from a movie called Evolution. You guys remember a movie called Evolution? That sounds familiar. Yep. I may have seen that at some point. Uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, David Duchovny, uh, Sean that's William right. Scott, and uh, what was it? Orlando Jones. Was that the other one, Cam? I think Orlando Jones was the one. Yeah. Because uh, I think it was seen there in the malls when they started singing that, right? That's right. He picks up the mic and starts singing it. Just, yep. I mean, I was singing it just like he did. I was trying to. <laughs> I was trying to think of some way that he would use to distract, 
you know, the Bigfoot while um, Lewis creeped around on it and took a shot at it. And that image of him doing that in that mall hit, came to mind. So I just did that. I mean, it was like, I didn't even have that written in the script. It just hit me. And I, I just did it out of the blue. So I, I, I'm, not, I'm not that original. I know. I, I still, I thought it was a great bit. I mean, you, you've, some of the bits you've thrown in there, I know you've, you've had those inspired by things that have really happened or things you've seen in movies, but I still go, one of my favorite bits in a Steve Lilly story always goes back when he chucks that bag of snakes underneath that church. Yeah. That I was, love that bit. That was a surprise, wasn't it? <laughs> you know, it wasn't, that's not a surprise anybody wants. A bag of pissed off water moccasins. Well, him going to catch those snakes starts about 10 pages before it happens, but I don't want to give up the punchline, you know. So he goes off fishing with, uh, you know, with the old man mm -hmm. right in the middle of a squatch hunt. And it doesn't make sense, but he knows what he's doing. He's got to go try to catch those co uh, cotton mouths. And, um, but see, that was even a story I was setting out. I may have told you all this, but I was uh, <clears throat> on a job site back in the 80s. And there was this episode going on in Memphis called the Shannon Street Incident. You can Google it and find out what it was. But um, there was a, the police had gone in to this house for, I don't even know the full extent of the story, but the people in the house were well armed and they took two cops hostage and I think they killed them. But, <clears throat> but this ordeal went on for days, days. And so it was big talk around Memphis, you know, well, we're, we're on a job site setting steel. We sit down to lunch. Of course, everybody's talking about current events. And this one guy, that subject came up, man, what are they going to do about that Shannon street bunch? And, this one old iron worker said, I'll tell you exactly what will fix that problem. He said, go get you a big sack full of, a tote sack full of cotton mouse and run by the window and throw it in. And every one of them some bitches will come running out. And he, he was 100% right. And I never forgot him. <laughs> well, I just laughed and laughed and laughed. And we all did. <clears throat> and um, so, yeah, that's a. Uh, I didn't see that in a movie. I just heard a guy suggest it. But, but see, that's the way Steve Lilly thinks, the way that iron worker was thinking. Just something clever, you know. I mean, it's totally unconventional and not something anybody would think of, but it would work. It would work just fine. So, you know, whereas Daniel Clark would, uh, Daniel Clark in the Wild Hunt would use flashbangs, Steve Lilly doesn't have that stuff. He's like, let's find something a little more, a little more low tech. I like speaking that of, solution. I still have a stationary device. <laughs> What's that? I said that's still a distractionary device. Yeah. I bet it is. Of course, one of those squatches come out with a cotton mouth hung in the back in his back of his thigh. The the and I think Steve Lilly he about runs over Steve Lilly and Steve kills him right at the last second. Hook comes out and sees that snake still hung in the in the back of a squatch's leg, and he said, "Boy, I bet that hurt." <laughs> anyway, but there's all kind of things that you know you can just think of. Uh, that's just the kind of personality he has. He's just he's pretty smart and when you know people may go through a lot of thought anyway speaking of cotton mouse i have these three ponds behind me here and i right uh, in my podcast i videoed some of it <clears throat> riding with my dogs and uh two weeks ago I, I saw the very i've been back going riding around back there for 10 years and i saw the first cotton mouth i've ever seen back there my little hairless dog hank hanky panky he, it was a big old cotton mouth. He was probably that big around. And it was right on top of the levee. And I, <clears throat> it was raining that morning, and I couldn't take them riding. So about 10 o'clock, it quit raining, and the sun came out. 
So I went and got Hank. The other two dogs didn't want to go. So me and Hank took off. We were at the end of the ride coming over that levee. And I had to put the brakes on before I ran over it. And I didn't want to hurt it. <clears throat> you run over one with a bike, it's not going to make it. It's going to die. But uh, that's the first cottonmouth I've ever seen back there. <clears throat> and Hank just ran right over it and never saw it. Now, that was weird. Lucky so, didn't bite him. So apparently they don't have any odor. Because if it had, had a scent, Hank could have been all over him. You're lucky that dog didn't get bit. Yeah. Cottonmouth would do a number on a dog. I think it may Especially have Especially a small him. dog. Yeah. T. Davis's cottonmouths are mean. Yep, that's a nasty snake. Get that down there so it's not on Cam's face there. Didn't realize that was up there up there at head level. Um, I was going to say something. Lost my train of thought. Um, do you still get plenty of, of uh, people sending in sighting reports and stuff? Uh, it's a lot slower than it used to be. I used to get 10 a day and, uh, I get about four or five a week now, sometimes just maybe one or two a week, <clears throat> but I haven't been able to be real active in the podcast. So it, it, it's understandable, but I will be again. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm, I come in every day and I record one story and then I just store it away till I get about a 45 minutes or an hour's worth of recordings. And then I <clears throat> will spend three or four hours editing it and putting it together and I'll put a podcast out. So. Cam, you got a viewer request. Hey, it's Kay says, Hey Cam, my daughter is dying for you to say hello. Can you say hey to Everly? Hey Everly. How old is Everly? I'll tell you a story about that. Um, I'm just a regular guy. I don't, I, there, you know, I'm not. Some people um, on YouTube, you know, kind of enjoy my stories. She's, is that from Everly's mom? Yes. Oh, she's 10. She's up way too late. <laughs> Hey, Everly, <clears throat> it's 10 o'clock. It's only 9 o'clock here, but it's 10 o'clock where you are, and your mama wants you to go to bed, but I want to say hi to Everly. Um, there was a podcast I did maybe uh, back during COVID. There's uh, my oldest son. He's married to a girl in Arkansas, and this girl's sister her husband died of COVID. <clears throat> um, and her daughter is a huge fan of my podcast. They listen, she listens to every podcast and her name is Chloe. So I mentioned Chloe in a podcast a couple of years ago, year and a half ago, just not too long after her father died. <clears throat> well, it's been a couple of years and uh, her mother met a man that she likes and they've been going out and uh, this man that she's going out with, his wife died a couple of years ago, not from COVID, but I think she had cancer, but they were all riding somewhere um, and Chloe said, put on Dixie. I want to hear Dixie. And so uh, her mother put it on the Bluetooth on, on the, in the car and pulled up one of my podcasts. And so the guy she's dating says, uh, you know, my wife, uh, when she was sick, she listened to this guy every day. She said his uh, voice was soothing and it calmed her down when she was going through um, 
uh, maybe chemo or she was just having a hard time with the cancer. And it, um, it just made me feel so good to, to know that, uh, you know, that, that's never my intention to calm people. I don't, I just read stories, <clears throat> but Chloe was going, I know him. I know him. That's Matt's dad. And this guy's going, what? And, uh, Chloe's mother is going, yeah, that's Matt's dad. My son's oldest son's name is Matt. That's Matt's dad. And he's going, you're kidding me. Y'all know Cam Buckner and, and they're going, well, yeah. Uh, he, and then Chloe's going, he talked about me in a podcast and she got, she got all, I think she's 10, 11, 12 years old. Anyway, I, that story was kind of nice. It was good to know that, you know, just, by virtue of doing the podcast that uh, someone got some comfort from it. <clears throat> um, That's always a plus. So always this like weekend we like were, that. this weekend we were in Arkansas. Um, at a birthday party for my granddaughters where Chloe was there. And so Chloe, I had not seen Chloe since I did that podcast. And I had not seen her before I did that on the podcast, probably for a couple of years. I don't see them very much. <clears throat> but Chloe came over and she hugged my neck and I got uh, I got my wife to take a picture of Chloe and I. And uh, so I'm going to put it on the next podcast. Chloe won't be watching this. <clears throat> but um, so like Everly wanted me to say hi to her that's so funny to me and chloe got a big kick out of me saying her name so it's fun to make these kids uh giggle and have a big time so anyway i'm absolutely just, i'm just rambling oh you're fine man we're having a good time so uh you know, i know you said you're going to be taking steve lily down some dark paths but uh are you uh gonna do uh thinking about doing any solo stories for some of the other characters Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's all kind of <clears throat> directions I've got. Matter of fact, you've built your own little universe there. You've got a lot of stories you could tell. 17 is hook. Um, 18 is Isabel is going to go it alone. I mean, the other characters eventually come in on some of them. <clears throat> and then, um, and then like 20, I've got some sketches on a deal. Lewis gets into, and in all this, they're trying to bring Steve back. Steve's in a terrible place. And uh, so, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do individual stories and stuff like that. Isabel's named after, that's a real name of a friend of mine. And uh, he still doesn't know it. It's a guy I used to work with, Mexican guy I used to work with. And uh, <clears throat> so I messaging on Facebook. I said, man, I need you to call me. I got something to tell you. And he won't answer my Facebook message. And uh, I can't wait to tell him I named a character specifically first and last name after him. Enjoy doing that. I, I like like naming characters after after friends of mine and family members, because it, to me, it, it just kind of adds that not only a real element to the story, but, you know, then, you know, the people that have been there with you along the journey kind of get a little bit of their little bit of themselves in the story as well. And to me, I, I really enjoy doing that. I'll say this. Uh, we were talking about events that you can pull from your life and put them into a book or a story. And I, I'm going to put this in a story coming up. So I, I think I saw 200 people in here earlier. So this I don't think this is a big spoiler, but one time. <clears throat> the real Isabel and I and two or three other guys were headed to a job site. We were in a company truck and the police were behind us pulling us over, but we were all talking and laughing and we didn't have maybe 20 or 30 miles to go to the site. We didn't even see this squad car behind us trying to pull us over. And, I wasn't driving. I was in the passenger seat. Isabel was driving. 
And I just happened to look over in the right side mirror and I saw those lights. I said, man, you got lights behind you. You better pull over. Well, right about that time, two other squad cars pulled in because we must have gone a mile or so, maybe more. And he, I guess he thought we were running or something. I don't know. So Isabel pulls on over and they, they, you know, they do the slow walk up to the, he's got his hands up. This was back in the, this is probably like oh three oh four somewhere in there, and uh, we're just sitting there waiting to get a ticket. You know, I, I think he was speeding, and <clears throat> this cop pulls up, comes up to him, and finally realizes that we were just telling the guy, we just didn't see you back there. If you'd have flipped on your siren or something, we may have heard you, because we didn't have any music going. He just had his lights on. Of course, there were two cars in front of us, one behind us. They had us all blocked in. Anyway, to make a long story short, they go up and ask Isabel for the uh, registration and insurance and license. And uh, the cop looks at him and goes, you got a green card? And Isabel goes, you got a fucking green card, man? See, he's Mexican. He's born in America. He's an American citizen. Let me see your fucking green card, dude. He hated it that this guy was asking him for a green card. <clears throat> and we, this highway patrolman was standing there and there's all four of us in there just laughing. We cannot stop laughing. And Isabel just giving this guy hell. And anyway, the cop even started laughing after a few minutes and it all wound, wound up pretty nice but and funny. But uh, so that's an episode that's going to go in the story uh, story. That's funny. Isabel actually had a Bigfoot encounter, a real Bigfoot encounter. <clears throat> we were in the break room one day. Everybody was talking about um, Bigfoot. I, we never talked about Bigfoot for, for for some reason. That was the topic in the break room. And uh, so some guy was saying he saw Bigfoot. Another guy was saying, oh, man, this guy saw Bigfoot. Isabel stand over with his arm in the door jam, just leaning up against it. <clears throat> he goes, I saw Bigfoot this week on the way to work, man. And everybody looks over at him. They go, bullshit. He goes, oh, I'm not kidding, man. I was driving down highway so-and-so. I looked over. And there he was over there leaning against a pecan tree. Well, what'd you do? He goes, well, I was late for work, man. I had to keep going. But he was just sitting there leaning against a pecan tree. We laugh when I'm around those guys. We still laugh. It's the way he told it that was funny, but uh, we we still laugh about that. Those are the best stories, though, because you, you, you when when you kill or especially if they, you know they catch one doing something, you know people that have seen seen one doing something that they didn't expect it to do, you know, the, we keep losing Robbie. Robbie, you keep cutting in and out, man. It's just internet down here. Sorry. <laughs> that, that iffy internet. Yeah. I'll Someone say it about earlier. damn satellites. There you go. Someone asked earlier, Kim, now that you've gone out to a, a couple of Bigfoot excursions, have you had a sighting? Me? Yeah. Um, I can't multitask guys i'm sorry i'm a man no worries no i don't have a bigfoot story i've never seen a bigfoot <clears throat> never heard a bigfoot never even seen any sign of a bigfoot ever in my life and so i think when people hear that they they get disappointed but um and I've even had people say, well, why are you, why do you do these stories? I'm like, because I love the stories. I mean, they're just great stories. I've, I've always enjoyed hearing just these crazy, weird stories that don't have to be about Bigfoot. But Bigfoot was hot at the time, so that's what I started with. And so, but no, I've never seen, <clears throat> however... Matter of fact, I was out with a bunch of people one night. I went camping with them just specifically because they promised me I would hear a Bigfoot. 
And we went out and they did this hooping and hollering and calling. Everything would get quiet and they'd go, there it is. Did y'all hear it? Did y'all hear it? And I'd be sitting there and I wasn't hearing anything. And then they'd say, there it is again. Did you hear it? And finally, well, some guy walked over me and goes, are you not hearing that? And I'm like, I don't hear nothing. But I am kind of hearing impaired from all the years in a shop, you know, the loud noises. and and the, But it's not that bad. And I, there had to be other people there that, you know, had the same level of hearing as me. But I never heard it. And then Mark Newbel and his crew were at LBL, uh, may have been last fall, about a year ago. I think it was. And the water was way down. And they found all kind of tracks. They had a video on it. And those tracks were... Believe me, there's no reason a human would be out there barefooted in a muddy lake bed. The water was way down. So, you know, the bank was real long and it was sand. And then it just went to mud. And the mud had even had a two inches of dry dirt that had dried on top of it. They were finding these tr- big tracks, barefoot tracks, and it was cold. And they were fresh tracks. They weren't filled with leaves or water or anything. They did a bunch of castings of them and stuff like that. So, um, <clears throat> and I was, you know, I did a documentary a couple years ago called Trackways. And when we were on that camp out, we bushwhacked up into the hills in the Daniel Boone National Forest, and we camped for two or three days. Those guys saw something dark running up the side of a mountain one morning after a big rock had hit in the rip in the creek bed. <clears throat> I was in the I was trying to get some coffee warmed up, get some coffee made, and. I just didn't run over there with them, but they said they saw something run up the mountain. So I've been with people who have seen them. It's just I have never possibly seen them. And then Lil Patty is asking, do you believe that Bigfoot exists? Probably does, but I've never seen one. Griff said Trackways was good. I liked it. I thought that was a good documentary. Could have been a little shorter. I should have made it shorter. But it was a, it was all right. My uh, my oldest son had uh, some had uh, some interesting things happen uh, out at uh, an area here just north of Springfield just two weeks ago. Uh, it's an area called the Twenty Five Mile Prairie. And it's out in Polk County. Him and his one of his one of his best friends drove out there at like midnight to stargaze. They were going to go out there and see how many, how many stars. They want to get well away from Springfield because of all the light pollution. So they drove out there and were looking at the constellations and checking out the stars. And he said, all of a sudden he heard tree knocks. And he said, first he didn't think anything of it. And then he heard another set from another direction. So he's, he's like looking around a little bit, get a little nervous. And he asked, he asked his friend that's with him, he says, did you hear that? And he's like, yeah, I don't hear nothing. He's like, listen. And about the time they heard it again, he's like, I don't know. It sounds like, you know, something hit somebody hitting something with a tree. You know, I don't know what it is. So when Nate, when Nathan explained to him, hey, that's that's part of, you know, goes with the Bigfoot sightings. People hear these knocks. Then they started getting a little nervous. And he said they heard them multiple times getting closer each time from three different directions. So now my youngest son and I are planning a trip out there once, you know, here now that the thing's finally cooling off in the evenings and we don't have quite so many bugs, but we're going to go out there with, with the DSLR and some recording equipment and see if we can't, can't get some of that on audio, hopefully catch something on video. Now you've told me about a couple of experiences you've had with deer missing. Mm-hmm. I had a deer, a good sized deer go missing. How about you, Robbie? You ever had an experience? Yeah, I've had several. I had my first one when I was eight years old, and uh, that's actually what got me into being DA's uh, co-host. But I've had several here over the past, what, year, year and a half, DA? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Robbie, you froze up, brother. I think we lost him again. BA, where'd you get that hat? I, there's a, a shop here in town called Just For Him. It's uh, like gifts for, for dads and, and, you know, like they've got pipes and they've got cigars and all kinds of stuff. Then you can get like whiskey flasks and stuff. And uh, my, my youngest son and I won't go in there periodically. And the other day we went in and they had this. It was one of their hats left over from last year and they had it on pretty heavy markdown clearance. And I was like, mm, I can't resist. I'm going to get it. I collect hats. Cool. Robbie? Uh did you freeze again? He's froze up. <clears throat> Robbie's internet may be crapping out on him. Yeah, we're kind of, yep, we lost him again. I see so, Neoma's uh, still in the chat, but she's mm -hmm. been putting out some awesome stories. You know, she wrote. She sure has. She wrote a couple of stories from for the podcast <clears throat> called Hunted Part One and Two. Mm -hmm. If you guys listen haven't heard those, go to my podcast and hear them. Not to hear me read it, but to hear Naomi's writing. She's a really, really good wordsmith. She's a very crafty. He's a great writer. writer. Yeah. Can you hear me now, DA? Yeah, you cut out there for a little bit, and then you'd pop back in, you'd just be froze. So you were telling Cam about some of your other experiences. Yeah, Johnny and I uh, saw something up in the woods one night, when we was, or one day when we was out there. Um, pretty sure that's what we saw, one peeking over the top of a rock at us. Um, and then Jessica and I were in Georgia, and sitting there having a, just having a discussion with bugs and crickets and everything just loud as you could be i mean it's like we were having to almost yell to be heard or heard over the top of it and all of a sudden just like a light switch everything just stopped got dead quiet and we both had the feeling that something was on either side of us so long story short we walked back down to where the car was and as i turned back around looked back up the hill where we were both standing I saw a big dark shadow uh, walk across the clearing right where we were standing on two legs. And it was dark, so I couldn't see it clearly, but I could clearly see something walking on two legs across that. So, yeah. That's I've had a few I never see anything. Hey, by the way, Neoma has her own YouTube channel, Neoma Finn, Open to Doubt. She's Definitely. been really, really putting out some really great podcasts in the last two or three months, longer stories and stuff that she's written. <clears throat> she she puts in a lot of work. I do it the easy way. I just read what other people have written. But Neoma writes everything herself. She spends a lot of time on her podcast. It's really good. I just posted the link to her channel. Folks, if you, know, if you uh, want to hear some really cool stories, go by Miss Naomi's channel and uh, we'll give her a like and a share and subscribe. And while you're at it, uh, go ahead and uh, make sure you're uh, like, share, and subscribe to Cam's channels, which are Dixie Cryptid and uh, the Steve Lilly Journals. And I just put those links up as well. Thank you. you hey, my pleasure, my, my friend. So, other than the Steve Lilly stuff, you know, what's the future got for Cam Buckner? Well, um, in my little notebook, I've got other ideas for short novels, 40, 50,000 word novels. Um, that's about it. I don't want to get to uh, get my too many irons in the fire, you know. So right now, <clears throat> I'm just doing good keeping up with my work and doing a one podcast a week. So that's all I can do. Yeah, you know, we uh, we only do what we can. You know, yeah, you know, I know work work and family's got to take a priority. When I was still a full time cop, 
I, uh, I my writing had to take a huge backseat. I, I didn't didn't get near as much writing out. And uh, you can you can call it a curse or you can call it a blessing, whichever. Uh, you, I guess you could look at it both ways. But when my back went out in 2020, I was laid up for a better part of two years. And all I did was write. Yeah. Uh, and that that really kind of changed everything. It changed the whole direction of my writing career. I can't go back to being a cop. Uh, but really, considering the modern political climate, I don't really want to. I miss the people. I don't miss the job. Yeah, it's, um, <clears throat> I don't know, for four years, I would get up at four o'clock, come in here and record a podcast, then I'd start work at seven or eight, <clears throat> then when the five, five o'clock in the afternoon, then I'd pull the podcast back up, do some editing. So I was working from like four in the morning until seven at night seven days a week i mean i rarely took a day off and so i could still be doing that now but this summer around the end of june uh no about the middle of middle of july at right after a couple weeks after the fourth i just thought you know what i'm gonna pull up i had so many things here that i had neglected <clears throat> that i needed to do so instead of getting up early and working late. Um, I do get up early. I'll record one story, then I get to work. Um, but then when I knock off in the afternoon, it's like I'll work on a project here. Like right now, I'm cutting stumps off. <clears throat> so I'll, I had a bunch of trees. I cut a bunch of trees down in my front yard and kind of out in this pasture out here. And I can't stand stumps just sitting there and they've been there for over a year i've just hadn't got to them and uh so every day i've been cutting off I, I, all the trees are i need to cut about that much out of that stump about a foot and a half to where i can get my stump grinder on it <clears throat> so i'll cut it off that's a i mean these trees are big big stumps are big so i'll cut them off and then i'll grind it and by that time it's getting dark <clears throat> So I've been doing one stump a day. I didn't do one today because I knew I'd be doing this show and I didn't want to be all dirty and nasty. You know, my uh, my grandfather had a had an old trick uh, that he used to get rid of stumps. And uh, it's probably illegal today, but it was, I remember my dad doing it and me helping when I was a teenager. He'd take a, a, a old, like old metal coffee can and mix mix 50 50 sugar and potash and pack it down in there and light it and blow a stump right out of the ground. My dad told me we were trying to get a stump out one time. He says, mix about a pound of each and then put it in the, in the pot of coffee can. I thought, well, surely that ain't enough. So I did five pounds and put it in a big can and stuffed it up underneath that stump. I blew that stump 40 feet in the air. Well, you just put it beside it. No, you dig a little hole down underneath it and shove it up underneath the root wad and pack it. Really? I blew that whole stump 40 feet in the air. A couple of years ago, I, you know, I'm always looking for something to film to go along with my readings. So, so a lot of times I'll just buy royalty-free stuff or royalty stuff and off a royalty site or... I'll put a camera on my chickens or a GoPro on my chest and film a ride. <clears throat> but uh, I was grinding some stumps on this side of my property last year. I set a camera up, and so I thought, well, that'll be my video, just grinding the stump, because it's kind of satisfying, really. If you know, a lot of people like these satisfying type videos where they see things. You know, grinding a stump, just watching it go away is it's kind of a satisfying thing to watch. But what really was funny to me is, okay, so here I am on film with a stump grinder that I bought specifically to grind all these stumps. My yard's full of trees. And I'm constantly having to cut them down. And <clears throat> so here I am on film grinding these stumps. And then I'm getting all this advice in the comment section about, hey, here's how you get rid of a stump. 
you put Epsom salt, so and so, so, or you drill a hole and you fill it up with lighter fluid and you, you know, diesel and you light it, let it burn, or you, you do this. You, what you should be doing is <clears throat> this, or, you know, the best way to get rid of a stump is this. And I'm like, do you not see me grinding this stump with a stump grinder? <clears throat> Why would I do that when I've got a stump grinder? It, it's amazing how people, it's like they just can't wait to go, oh, let me let me tell you how to do this. And it's like, I don't know. I just thought it was so funny. I bet I got two dozen of those comments. Well, what you ought to do is, that's what I hear them saying. What the hell, what you ought to do is, Putting their fingers in their suspenders. And... <laughs> get, get yourself some diesel fuel. Yeah. Thank you, that Amfro. I'll tell you one good thing that did happen on one of those is <clears throat> we've got a little fire pit out here in the front yard. It's made with these. Um... Anyway, my kids got together for our anniversary and made all these cool little blocks for us to make a fire pit out of. <clears throat> so it's been there for several years. But during the year when we're picking up sticks and from these pine trees and stuff out of the yard, we just throw them in there. And when it gets big enough, we just burn it. Well, I used to do that and film that for my B-roll for, you know, to run in a video. And so... <clears throat> I, I tried to light one one day and I couldn't get it to light. The wood was soaking wet. It had just, it had been raining for days. But I thought with that old dead pine, those dead pine limbs, I could get it hot enough with diesel, and dry it out, and get it, get it going, but it never would light. So I had like 30 minutes of me trying pouring diesel and lighting it and it going out. And <clears throat> so I thought, well, I'm just going to put that on there because that's kind of funny, you know. Well, it just freaked people out that I couldn't get that fire started. And I'm like, I know why I couldn't get the fire started. The wood was wet. You can't, you can't burn wet wood. It's just hard to do. So I'm just showing y'all this because it was kind of funny. You know, I, I, it's hard to explain, but I got all this advice about, well, I, you need to let me show you how to build a fire and all this stuff. And okay. I know how to build a fire. <clears throat> it was just wet wood. But one man, uh, we have a, our P.O. box on our about page on YouTube. And he sent me a coffee can full of these fire starters <clears throat> because it upset him that I was using diesel because it's not good for the environment. Some of that diesel doesn't burn and it, it'll soak down into the water table. He's right. It's not a good thing to do. So uh, he said, here, I, I made you these fire starters. I want you to have them. They'll light anything. <clears throat> well, I had never seen them before. And what he had done was take um, egg crates, you know, egg cardboard egg cartons, and then fill each hole up with paraffin or mm -hmm. candle wax <clears throat> and mixed in with uh, wood shavings and dryer lint and all that stuff. I'm telling you, those are the best fire starters I have ever used. I had I had never heard of doing that. So since then, my wife makes about three dozen every three or four months. So I don't use diesel anymore. I just use those to start fires. But she figured out how to make them. And I, I never could remember the guy's name that sent them. But I always wanted to thank him. And uh, But that's one time when a guy got after me about how I was doing something and he actually backed it up with a with a package you know so I've always appreciated him <clears throat> Poncho Zork said I use cotton balls soaked in Vaseline I used to take uh, uh, cotton balls and pack them with Vaseline keep them in a Ziploc bag for when I went camping I tell you what these little egg crate cardboard paraffin dryer lint things I ha they have never failed to light a fire on reasonably dry wood even without kindling <clears throat> you just like really wood. yeah <clears throat> might have to make some of those well if you've got good seasoned wood just 
get it where it'll get air and just light that thing under it. That, those lighters will burn for 10 minutes and uh, they're cheap to make and they're kind of fun to make. And when you make them, if you do a scented candle, your house smells good. And anyway. <clears throat> <laughs> Neoma. Yeah, she just tells her kids to go light it. They can get anything to burn. Well, guys, it's 8.30. You mind if I peel off? <laughs> well, you know, I, I knew you'd uh, you'd have to be going to bed pretty soon because I know you got to get up early in the morning. Uh, we'll probably hang out just a little bit longer because we still have to talk about our our, uh, our channel affiliates. Uh, but, you know, we are really happy you came and hung out with us, man. Thank you so much. You going to talk about Scallywag Tactical? Scallywag, Dark Angel, and Brock Blades. There's one of five knives I bought from them. Thank you for the super chat, Flyby. Thank you, man. This is the... Um, Cam Van Morgan. I forget the name of it. I don't know if you can see their emblem. No, that's a privateer, isn't it? It is. Yeah, that's the privateer. Yep. It's a that's a dog. sharp rascal, ain't it? It is, right? It's very sharp right out of the box. But I've used it quite a bit, and it's a... Uh... Cam loves to cut you three ways. <laughs> Long, deep, and continuous. <laughs> But it's so heavy in my pocket, so I just use it when I when I need something heavy. But these little, uh, I don't know what these are. I can't remember what they're called. I bought one each for Oh, the mini car. jack. Yeah. <clears throat> these things are so tight that you actually have to break them in. It's like the locking mechanism. You have to kind of train it to stay locked. But... <clears throat> I carry this on me all the time. So they make a really good product. And I, it, as soon as these wear out, I'm buying more. There's your commercial. There's a, my everyday, the one I carry every day is this one, Cam. It's a little bigger than the, bigger than the uh, privateer. This one's called the Razorback Folder. This thing is stupid sharp. Oh man. It's heavy duty too. It's like a quarter inch thick. You carry that in your pocket? Sure do. Man, that'll pull my pants down off, off around my ankles. <laughs> well, I, I don't wear it without a belt. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for inviting me. I always enjoy spending time with you guys. And sorry to bail on you, but I, I want to go spend at least 30 minutes with my old lady before she goes to well, bed. I totally understand, man. Thank All you right. for hanging out with us, man. I'll, I'll be talk, I'll get a hold of you later this week. I uh, want to get back with you on what we were talking about on Audible and stuff, and and uh, we need to get a couple balls rolling and talk right. about some projects and and just chit chat. Thanks for everybody tuning in. I'll be back with a podcast in the next day or two. And good to see you again, Cam. Robbie, good to see you. Thanks for having me. Cam, have a good night, man. Thanks for being on. Thanks. Folks, just in case you don't know who uh, Cam is, check out Dixie Cryptid and the Steve Lilly podcast. You guys will thoroughly enjoy them. We uh, we have a uh, we've had a had a, a long road together. I started listening to Dixie Cryptid years ago when I was still um, still working in law enforcement. I would spend a lot of overnight shifts, and uh, that got me through a lot of shifts listening to Dixie Cryptid. Uh, fantastic stuff, and uh, yeah, we will thoroughly enjoy it. Thoroughly enjoy listening to Cam talk. And I tell you, I, I was a big fan of his. Uh, but when I first sent him an email about, you know, maybe doing a project together or something like that, I, I, I didn't figure he would even respond. I mean, I, I didn't figure I'd ever hear back. But And it took about a year <laughs> because he gets so many freaking emails every day. You know, he might just kind of get sunk to the bottom. And then just one day out of the blue, he contacted me and he said, he said, how about we just talk on the phone instead of, you know, swapping emails. So I gave him my phone number. He called and, and we just, it was like, like with me and Robbie and me and doc, we just hit it off immediately. Just a super nice guy, genuine guy. And, uh, I really enjoy working with him. He, you know, I, I would definitely be seeing a lot of projects for us 
from us together in the per in the future. Well, since Doc isn't here, we happen to have a video where uh, Doc himself can tell us a little bit about Dark Angel Medical. Sound good? Sounds good. All right, let's hear a little word from Pocket Doc himself. Hey, everybody, this is Kerry Pocket Doc Davis from Dark Angel Medical, and you are listening to DA Ex Machina with DA Roberts. You may recognize me or some of my products from Dark Angel Medical in some of the Apex Predator, Lakeview Man, and Wild Hunt books, and you can get those products at www.darkangelmedical.com, along with training classes on how to use those products and save a life. Shoot us an email at info at darkangelmedical.com and be the difference. And if you go over to Dark Angel Medical and check out the kits, you use make sure on on, on uh, checkout you use discount code Cryptid twenty five for twenty five percent off your order. Um, and if you mention Wild Hunt or Team Odin, you can also get a little Team Odin rocker that goes on the Velcro on your on your kit. So definitely check out check out Doc's kits, best in the business. I carried one throughout the bulk of my law enforcement career, and I just can't imagine trusting my life to another kit. Robbie, you want to tell us a little bit about Scallywag? Sure. I don't have my knife here because obviously they won't let us carry stuff here. So I can't, I don't have my knife to show. But DA, I'm sure you can back me up on the on the show and tell part. Uh, the Scallywag tactical, tactical is another one of our uh, veteran owned affiliate companies. Uh, Greg and his guy, or Craig and his guys make a bunch of excellent folding knives, fixed blades, uh, kitchen knives. It just, any kind of knife that you can imagine, just about. Make really high quality blades. Uh, you're not going to go to a big box store and find a knife comparable in price and quality like you will these. They've got a section called the blemish blades, which usually is just nine times out of ten, it's the box. The box has gotten damaged and they can't sell it as new. So they pass those savings on to you and you can also when you go through there find you a good deal on a blemish blade you go to checkout and you put in code uh that was the da roberts 10 right right it's, yeah da roberts 10 a little too small for me <laughs> on my phone sorry yeah and i'm on my phone tonight guys I'm not on my computer that's why my picture looks smaller all my internet's in and out but is what it is but put code DA Roberts 10 in it to check out, and that'll give you an extra 10% off of the good price that you've already got on these knives. DA's been holding up. He's probably got just almost every one of them. I know he, I joke about it all the time. He's getting close, though. I, there's still quite a few I don't have. In fact, they just introduced a brand new one that I would love to have. Uh, it's It's a brand new Tomahawk. Uh, it just came out, I mean, like this week. And, you know, when, when I, when I, well, I've priorities got to be, I got to get a new desk chair because this one's crap and it hurts my back. So I'm going to save up and get a good desk chair. Um, you know, I've been spending $120, $130 here and there on a, on a desk chair and they only last six, seven months before they start breaking down. This one's a little more expensive. It's about $600, but it's, it's made for people with back issues. It's, it is, you know, it's it, it's the Cadillac of chairs, kind of, and it'll it'll be much better for me for my riding and everything because I spend a lot of time in these chairs, and I'd probably be a lot more productive than I am if I didn't have to get up after a couple hours and walk around and stretch. Um, but uh, hopefully, I can get this new chair, new saved up to get that new chair. But after the new chair, I want to get one of those, one of those those uh, tomahawks because they are awesome. And like I said, they're a long time affiliate they're a long time stable in the books if you've read da's books you've you've heard all these knives mentioned for just about um, the bounty the gunner's mate the privateer uh probably i think even the boarding axe has made a couple of appearances hasn't it yep sure has so yeah just like with dark angel medical we don't talk about these things and use them as affiliates if we don't believe in the products ourselves. So go check them out. Use that code DA Roberts 10, get yourself an extra 10% at checkout. And just for a little patty, that's all I got to say about that. 
There's the that's the new new tomahawk. Ooh, that's nice. It is real nice. Real nice, Clark. That is oh. real nice, Clark. This oh, yeah, is real nice. I can't I can't afford it right now. I gotta save up and buy that chair. But uh yeah, they've got they've got all all kinds of great stuff over there. And you can still get a, quite a few blades on the blemish blade sale. And some of those are very discounted. Uh, you know, the, I don't think the orc is available anymore, but when they had it, it was like 10 bucks. Yeah. Uh, I think I, but, I think I paid like 10 for my orca and shipping and all. I think it was like still under $15. Um, anyway, I was sorry. I was answering somebody. Um, but yeah, definitely check out Scalawag Tactical. Um, fantastic blades. Our other affiliate, since I don't have Doc here to show off his blades, I'll just have to show off the one I've got so far, is uh, Ken, Ken Brock over at BrockBlades.com. I haven't seen Ken in the comments tonight, have you? Yeah, he, I haven't seen him either. This one's called the Skein Do, which means black blade. It's uh, modeled off of uh, the blades the Highlanders carried in Scotland. It was a holdout knife they kept it in their sock. It was also a utility knife they used it to eat with and cut, you know, pretty much anything and everything. Uh, but you know, he he makes those. That one actually has a titanium blade. Uh, just a fantastic knife. Uh, he makes custom knives. Uh, whereas Scallywag blades are all, you know, they're 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 they're, they're, they're great, fantastic knives. Don't get me wrong, but if you buy any two of them, they're identical. Uh, Ken's blades are all custom made. And uh, no two are no two will ever be perfectly identical. Uh, when you custom order one, you can order the, the the type of blade you want, the type of handle you want, the type of cross cut you want. You can you can really customize these blades. And if you know anybody that's a first responder or a veteran or current current military, you know, or an outdoorsman of any type, uh, the 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 gift of a custom blade is something that'll be cherished for a long time. And these aren't ones that you um, that these aren't ones that you uh, uh, can just put on a shelf to admire. These are knives that are intended to be used. Uh, so, you know, definitely, you know, hopefully you guys will check them out as well. Um, so yeah, go ahead over to brockblades.com and on, on, uh, di on, on checkout, use code cryptid 10 for 10% off your order. Or if you order a custom blade, make sure that you mention that you read, heard about it, uh, heard about Brock blades from here on the, on DAX Machina and he'll still give you the 10% on a custom build as well. So how much longer you got uh in uh in in Alabama there, Robbie? Uh we got train the trainer tomorrow. So pretty much all the classroom stuff and all the graded stuff is done for the actual class. Now I just gotta do that that tomorrow and then they will release us probably sometime Friday morning. So well, you know, then you'll then you'll be home for the weekend. Yeah. And just Thank to let you. you all know, we won't have a show this Saturday. I'm going to be at the Ozark Mountain Bigfoot Conference. I don't know how late I'm going to be there. And there's going to be some folks in town. Nona Boss and the girls from Blondes and Booze are going to be in town. So by the time we're done at the conference and and get to, you know, eat dinner and everything, it's probably going to be too late to have a show. So won't be one on 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 Saturday night. Um so kind of bear with us, you know, but I do, I do uh, want to make that appearance at that Ozark mountain Bigfoot festival. I've been looking forward to it for a while, get to hang out with some folks. Uh, but you know, definitely you should be checking out some of these other channels like Mike from over at abnormal investigations. Who's been a guest on the show. Uh, Mike goes live on Saturday nights. Now uh, he usually goes, mm -hmm. go, comes on about 10 as we're going off. Uh, I just uh, posted the link to, to Abnormal Investigations. So swing by over to Abnormal Investigations. Give them a like, share, subscribe. Let them know we sent you. Uh, because he, he's got some fantastic con content. He does a lot of boots on the ground stuff. Uh, goes out uh, to some pretty woolly places in Oklahoma. And uh, he gets some pretty interesting stories. Uh, so you know, definitely check out. Uh, there's one he just had just story he did. Because he does some stories that are longer than he does ones that are like five to ten minutes. Well, one he did, I was like six or seven minutes long just the other day, was about some folks, I believe it was in Maine, that got jumped by a dog man. And one of the girls in the group got her finger bit off by it. Um, 
So, you know, really cool story. You guys want to check that one out. Some of his stories are pretty creepy. But, uh, yeah, head over there and check check out Abnormal Investigations. Give them a like, share, and a subscribe. Yeah, Mike does a really good job over there. I, I love watching his videos. Also, uh, same thing with the, the, the gals over at Blondes and Booze. Uh, they put out some awesome content. We're going to be doing some stuff with them here in the near future. I don't want to give the, give it away too terribly much. Uh, but head over. I should be posting the link right now. Head over to the Blondes and Booze channel. Uh, give them a like, share, and subscribe as well. And let them know we sent you. And uh, also to Nona Boss. So uh, we're trying to to uh, spread the love here with uh, some of the our, what we call our, our brother and sister channels. Uh, these are channels that we just work with quite a bit and, and people we think highly of. Uh, so, you know, hope you guys will definitely go over and like, share, and subscribe to their channels uh, because none of our channels are huge. You know, it's not like any of us are, are, are monster sized channels. We're so we're just still trying to get our names out there and, 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 and still, still bring you guys good content. And I think every one of them you know, all provide great content. Mike's got some awesome content. The girls at Blondes and Booze have got awesome content. Nona Boss has got some great content. Definitely check them out. Give them all a like, share, and subscribe, and let them know we sent you. And, Robbie, you want to tell us a little bit about your channel? Sure. Uh, my other, or my channel that, that I do, uh, besides this, which we all love to call DAX Mocking a Light, uh, Johnny and I do a little bit smaller show than this as far as time frame. We usually do about... 35 40 minutes every once in a while we might go a little bit longer than that and go an hour but mostly usually that just a little focused 30 to 45 minute show um try, we try to get an episode out every wednesday sometimes that don't work but we're getting close to 50 episodes now we're over 300 subscribers on youtube we're trying to bump that number up but if you like this channel if you like the stuff you hear on abnormal uh, investigations. If you like this, you like this kind of stuff. It, it's the same kind of type of stuff. We we like to look for local legends that we can kind of dig into and you know break down. And sometimes we can debunk them. Sometimes we can't. We talk about things that we've experienced. Some of the things that we've seen. Uh, Johnny and I've got a um, a site that we go investigate on. Uh, pretty good bit. We've actually got a couple more sites that we've been told about. Um, so, yeah, come check us out on YouTube. It's what's really out there. Uh, we're also on Spotify and iHeartRadio, and I believe we're on iTunes as well. But uh, really check us out on YouTube. So that's where we're really trying to push. So I appreciate it, Mike. Thank you. I get it. I guess I get to say it twice. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> and Steve's not here, but we'll, we'll go ahead and plug his channel as well. Since Steve's not here, Steve uh, is in healthcare and he uh, has a channel called the inebriate nurse for male nurse, uh, pun intended. Uh, but it's, um, it's a channel where he just talks about humorous stories from, from his time in, in, in working in scrubs. Uh, and the, 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 um, Stream Elements just posted the link to his as well. So show his channel some love. I think he's uh, still trying to get the name out there. I don't know how many subs he's got. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Uh, but uh, he's, he's, he's got some pretty funny stuff on there. So I definitely check those out as well. So uh, that, that's uh, the end of my soapbox for the night. We, um, we, uh, we enjoy uh, providing content for y'all. We enjoy hanging out with you guys and getting to spend time with people like Cameron Buckner. And, you know, we just, we have a good time doing this and, uh, we hope that you guys enjoy listening to us. Um, Totem Whisper says, DA, I might've missed it, but when's your next book come out? I just dropped one last week. Uh, so it might be a little bit before the next one comes out, but yeah, the, uh, and speaking of that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop the link on that too. Um, Howl of the Wolfman is book two of the Dark Frontiers series. Uh, it's my my cryptid series that's set in the eighteen in 1865, right at the end of the Civil War. And it is still currently number one in Western horror fiction. It is a number one, it's a number one bestseller, and I'm very, very thrilled to to be able to say that. 
Uh, thank all of you guys for helping make it make that make that a reality. Uh, but Howl of the Wolfman is is out and it's it's doing well. And uh, hopefully we'll have uh, some more titles out for you guys in the near future. I'm going to have a, a probably coming up within the next month to 40 month to month and a half. You know, 30 to 45 days. I'm going to have a compilation of short stories coming out that I haven't given a title yet. I'm finishing up two more long short stories, so this one will probably still be in the in the category of a regular size book. It'll have enough short stories in it that it'll still be 65, 70, 80 thousand words, uh, because three of the short stories are right at right at 20 thousand words on their own. Um, and then I've, I'm going to finish up the next uh, with the first of my fantasy series. It's called Heart of Iron. Uh, and the, everybody's been asking about Will Gray Eagle. Well, you know, that book will will deal with with where where Will's been. Um, and then the one after that is going to be the second of the Nightmare Hunter books. That it's called it's called Nightmare Hunter the Nightmare Hunter Project Curse of the Rougarou. And I'm about halfway done with it as well. And right on the heels of that should be the next Lakeview Man book yet, which I don't have a working title for yet. But if you're a member of the Patreon community. Uh, you can you can vote on on possible titles. I've got a whole list of, of upcoming books over there. Uh, you guys can have input on you know on book titles and and plotting and 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 uh, advanced looks at covers. And there's a bunch of short stories available in the Patreon community right now that are available nowhere else. Some of those short stories will be in this upcoming compilation, but they are already out for members of the Patreon community. So if you want to check that out, you can head over to patreon.com slash DA Roberts author and check that out. And uh, we would sure love to have you as a member of the Patreon family. Uh, Roxanne says no more Apex Predators. Yes, there will be. Uh, I've, I'm not planning on stopping any of the series anytime soon, but I have a bunch of series. Uh, I, 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 I don't know if I, if I really say I've bitten off more than I can chew. Really, what I've done is I've got enough series in print to where as I rotate through the books, I'm probably only going to get one, maybe two books per series per year, uh, two if I'm really lucky. Uh, but I've got enough series running right now where I can probably do one book a year per series, and that'll still put out a lot of books every year. Uh, so, yes, there will be more Apex Predator. Yes, there will be more Codename Wild Hunt. The next Wild Hunt book is going to take place under uh, underwater. Uh, Robbie and I have already been talking about that. I've already been planning Margolin's one-liners and, and hijinks that he's going to get involved in. But uh, yes, there, there are more coming from all the current series. I'm not planning on stopping any of the series anytime soon. And uh, for those of you who uh, have read Howl of the Wolfman, I dropped a hint, a big hint, in the first in the, the prologue chapter about an upcoming new series called Project Olympus. And uh, I think I think that one's going to be a lot of fun, too, uh, because there's going to be some familiar faces in that as well. And there you're going to see some crossover of characters and it's going to be a, 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 a big part of the expanding D.A. verse. So hopefully you guys will check that out. And again, those will be coming soon. We've got a whole lot of projects coming your way. And uh, now that now that Cam is finally uh, getting his work schedule, we're going to see a lot more audio dropping, too. Hey, uh, that Wyatt. Thank you. Wyatt Estes gave us a, uh, a super chat. He says, uh, for chair, a new Tomahawk fund. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Thanks, That's Wyatt. awesome. Appreciate it, brother. But uh, I, I lost my train of thought. Robbie, you got anything else you want to add? Uh, just thanks for bearing with me with the <laughs> crappy accommodation internet. Not, well, not in the house. <laughs> well, I, I'm glad you were able to jump in even with the crappy internet because if it hadn't been for that, it would just been me and Cam. Yeah, and apologize for not being my normal talkative self, but this week has really drained me. It is running around outside in, a tra in the equivalent of a hefty trash bag in 90-degree weather is not exactly conducive to being – full of energy so yes i saw I, i'm on my phone so i can't answer messages in the chat but i, I saw mike say a couple things about it and some other people said yes i am exhausted i'm tired but you know when i say i'm going to be on the show i'm going to be on the show da knows that <laughs> i might go and fall asleep but i'm here so poncho thank you for the super chat man thank you so much 
But I enjoy coming on and talking and or listening like I did tonight. <laughs> Hang on a second. Uh, we've got to do our uh, our lift our glass, and I, I don't have anything poured. So give me just a second to get a little little splash of something in a cup. Probably shouldn't show the label on the air. YouTube kind of frowns on that. Yeah. So give me just a second to get set. No, you can't see through that, can you? <laughs> Picture so darn small over here. I can't tell what I'm, whether you can or not. Nah, I can see you all right. No, I'm talking about. I don't, I don't see. Yeah. I don't see the label. No, you're fine. Okay, good. Um, I want to lift a glass to all of all of our veterans and first responders out there, all the people that you know put their butts on the line to keep us all safe at night. Uh, the people that have have. Well, this is the saying goes, some gave all and all, all gave some and some gave all. And uh, we we really owe a debt to those who have given so much for us to be free and safe, especially to those who gave literally everything. Uh, so our our hearts and our love is out to all first responders and, 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 and military and law, and law enforcement, all the veterans and everyone. And remember the 22 a day foundation, we lose 22 veterans a day, reach out to those that have, that have, have seen things that'll stick with them. You know, the, 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 the veterans, the combat veterans, the law enforcement who may have, you know, has seen some pretty horrific things. I know I've seen some pretty ugly stuff in my career. Um, I know Robbie has to, you know, reach out to those folks, let them know you're thinking about them uh, because you never know when, when your, your text just asking them how they're doing or letting them know you were thinking about them might be what pulls them back from the ledge that day. And 22 a day is way too many. So uh, let's, let's lift our glass to them. And I, I always like to quote one of my favorite songs. It's called the parting glass. It's an old Irish tune. And it, when on the surface, it's talking about somebody leaving the bar at the end of the night. But when you really think about the lyrics, it's much deeper than that. It, it's, it's somebody saying goodbye to, to those who couldn't carry on. And uh, it's a beautiful song. If you haven't had a chance to listen to it, I highly suggest it, highly recommend it. It's a beautiful song. But I, uh, I like to quote this one verse, and it said, But since it fell unto my lot, that I should rise and you should not, I'll gently rise and softly call. Good night and joy be to you all. Good night, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Catch us again Wednesdays and Saturdays on DAX Machina. A special thanks to all our channel members and Patreon supporters. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe.